we're here. And this episode of the podcast is once again supported by 35bikes.com. 35 Bikes make the best bike components for the best prices. So if you're in the need for some new brake pads, maybe brake rotors, mud guards, or whatever, head to 35bikes.com, enter the promo code PODCAST, and you can get 20% off your entire order and also take advantage of free shipping. We are also literally supported by Saks Underwear. Saks have been supporting the podcast for many episodes now and supporting nutsacks around the world for many years. And if you do want to wake up, put your legs through the holes and have an angel's hand cupping your nutsacks throughout the day, then head to saxunderwear.com to find your local stockist or shoot us a message and we'll point you in the right direction. Okay, let's get on with the podcast. Hi, I'm Ollie Wilkins and this is the Hook It Podcast. Hold tight, freshers. Okay. Here we are, guys. Episode number 50. I still can't believe it myself. Um, usually I do like to start these episodes off by saying thank you to you guys for your support, but most importantly, uh, and, it, and it obviously means more than ever for this episode, thank you so much to everybody who's helped make this thing possible, get us to where we are. Um, 50 episodes in the bag, it's nuts. If you are a new listener, then welcome to the show too. But if you've been around for a while and you've continued to support this podcast, thank you. It means a bunch. So, uh, yeah. Um, finally, in other news, finally we have a t-shirt. We've got a t-shirt launch and it'll be next week, towards the back end of next week. Um, all proceeds from this t-shirt sale are, are going to go into buying new equipment for the podcast for an upcoming project I've got going on. Um, obviously, as you guys probably know, there's not, no money exchanges hand with this thing. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try and raise some money to buy some equipment. So if you have enjoyed listening to this podcast, please grab a T-shirt. Uh, it's hand-drawn. It's pretty rad. I'll release the design on social media and all that sort of stuff towards the back end of next week. Uh, T-shirts will be available online along with Fort William World Cup. Um, we've got the Kendall Mountain Film Festival where I'll be there as well. Malvins will have some t-shirts at that event as well. Um, so if you are heading to any of those events, please come over and say hello, uh, especially Fort William. Fort William, I will be there on the sack stand, working there, selling some pants and hopefully some teas. So uh, come over and say hello. If you're at the Kendall Film Festival, come over there again. I'll be on the sack stand and then Hook It have got a stand at Malvins Classic. Uh, I'll have some teas and a bunch of other stuff as well. So please come over and say hello. It'd be awesome to meet some of you guys again. Like last year, it was rad. Um, okay, episode 50. It only felt right to wait and have Joe uh, and Mono on for episode 50. Obviously, the release of Gamble is, a, is in a couple of days, depending on when you listen to this. So we've got a few excerpts in here as well from some of the riders. There's P.E., Loic, Mark Wallace. We've got Jordan from Bike Track as well, talking a little bit about the track they built in Sheffield for Steve's section. Um, so yeah, we're going to dive into the film a little bit, find out more about those guys too, and... Uh, Hopefully, you enjoy this episode. It's a little bit of a different one, um, but yeah. All right, let's get on with it. Catch you on the flip side. Enjoy. Boosh. <laughs> and we're live. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, this is episode number 50. Can you Adam and Eve it? We made it to episode 50 and we have my mate, Joe Bowman, and my new mate, Aaron Bartlett, is it? Aaron Bartlett, yeah. That's, that's yeah, right. Bartlett, yep. a.k.a. Uh, Mono of Creative Concepts. Um, and uh, these guys have got a, a film coming out pretty soon called Gamble, which is released in a couple of days. 
So we're going to have a brief chat about their lives and then we're going to, uh, yeah, drop some knowledge on, on Gamble. Um, so dudes, welcome to the show. It's great to have you both here. Um, it's a bit of a strange setup, let's be brutally honest. <laughs> we've yeah. got... Uh, well, did you see you across the room? Yeah, yeah, me and Joe are looking at each other and then we've got Mono uh, on a on a live link coming in from Cornwall. <laughs> so You should see me, Saya. I'm in the corner of my bedroom <coughs> in the only place that I can get internet because we don't have internet yet. And um, Oh, my word. Sat, I don't know, I'm like... Sounds familiar. Just buried, I'm buried under some stuff like this setup. I've got a tripod here with a microphone taped to it and i've got my laptop and i've got two sets of headphones one with you guys in and the other one uh, i'm listening to myself in the other ear so it's, it's full <laughs> if you guys out. weren't media folk like media squids i'd be pretty worried i think if i'm honest but <laughs> with a bit of luck we're gonna i struggled off. to get my laptop to pick my headphone audio up so that's worrying it <laughs> going forward <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's taken us yeah an hour longer than we expected to set this shit up, but we're here. <laughs> so, <laughs> when I heard Joe was eating, I was like, screw this, I'm going to go eat as well. But we got here eventually. <laughs> what time did we say we were going to do this? Was it 7.30? And it's now 9. <laughs> it's been an hour and a half. 7.30. Around. At 7.30, and I was on the PlayStation. I completely forgot, sorry. I'm glad you, <laughs> uh, I'm glad you were running too. late. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a pack but anyway. bag and bike as well for tomorrow morning. Yeah, of Ooh. course. So... Yeah, for those listening, Joe will be in Whistler when the film is released, so you can send uh, hate messages to Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't know. But dudes, thanks so much for doing this. Um, it's rad that it's episode 50, and I've got Joe, who's arguably one of my best friends sometimes. Uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to hold out, like I said to you, Mono, and have Joe on for episode 50. It just felt like the right thing to do. So. Yeah, you got to uh, get the old band together for... <laughs> yeah, 50, like isn't it? I can't remember when Joe was on here, but I can't remember what episode was. It might have been ten. So if anyone wants to listen to that, we've come a long way, hopefully, since then. But it's uh, it was a pretty that was ages ago. Podcast, that one, yeah. yeah, it was in yeah in your old house, like yeah, well weird. I need to listen to that one. I haven't listened to it yet. I didn't realize that, that Joe had done one before. Yeah, we did. Like it was decent. It was probably like episode ten or something. It's going back probably a year and a half, but you know. A lot of this, the success of this podcast, or yeah, some some sort of success is due to Joe. So, episode fifty is dedicated to you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, uh, wrap up at that. Thank you. <laughs> but no, now you're doing good. It's cool. I'm glad you got to fifty. It's been it's yeah, gone I mean, quick as well. It, it has. Yeah, I think it's been like almost two a week. Uh, sometimes one every week. I've still got forty nine to listen to, but I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Davy, do you think you'll do you think you'll get to fifty on your birthday as well? Uh, do you think you get to dude, 50 it's as... getting close, man. It's getting so close, like really quickly. I'm thirty one, and I still tell people if they ask me for some reason, I got it in my brain. I'm twenty nine. What was podcast I, number thirty one? What was thirty one? Yeah, put oh, you on man, the spot. I have no idea. Yeah. I honestly don't know. I could look it up, but I have no idea. <laughs> These things have been going like weird. I mean, we're not here to talk about me, but it's been crazy. Like, when you look back, I mean, having Joe on, like, 40 episodes ago, that's crazy. It's so, yeah, well. thanks, everyone, for continuing to listen. Hopefully, you still listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Personally, I'm starting to tune out. All right. So, I figured the best thing we could do with this is we'll do some a little bit of a brief backstory, just so we know how we got to this point arguably the most important part of your career is you know coming on this podcast um <laughs> True. and then yeah we'll we'll you know understand a little bit more how you got to this point and then we'll chat about the film a little bit um yeah and then that's uh, that's a wrap so <laughs> uh cool if anyone hasn't already listened obviously to joe's we'll go, we'll do joe first if that's cool um so brief synopsis synopsis joe of how you ended up get into like this point of making a, a feature length mountain bike film oh, uh, that's hard when you put it like that I guess I probably started filming in 2010 uh, and then after I guess a couple of years when I started um, getting to know Steve Pete and that kind of escalated into the This Is Pete series um, 
and literally when we got into that it just spiraled pretty quickly from really? there doing all the world cups obviously met aaron and everyone else and yeah it was on the world cup circuit each year and obviously doing other stuff outside of that until uh 26 end of 2016 but i guess since the end of 2015 we started kind of well i was always kind of like i always wanted to do a film like oh, nice. since i started yeah, filming yeah. just because i was always a, been a super fan of biking and just bought every dvd watched every single you know web episode going back in the day but not as much now but uh just the full length films there's something about them that kind of was special compared to your, your daily content online and yeah. i think it means a lot to do one it's obviously a lot of work and mm-hmm. now that we've done one you kind of look at what people like adam and clay and ranking and everyone have been making for years it's like it's, it's crazy yeah. uh yeah. and yeah just always wanted to do one and then we started talking a bit probably end of 2015 maybe about the idea of it and it went from there and then yeah didn't do world cups in 2017 uh we kind of committed and yeah the full year on this yeah i mean still doing other bits but yeah did yeah kind of committed pretty hard to trying to get this thing done and okay. yeah sweet and here we are now um all right, we'll come back to you in a sec, Joe. But Mono, um, obviously, you know, we don't knew, know each other that well. So a little bit of a brief, like Joe did, like a bit of a brief synopsis, you know, how did you how did you end up working with the lovely Joey here? <laughs> um, yeah, pr- probably pretty similar to Joe, really. Like, I started a little bit earlier than Joe. I think we first met on uh, Mojo Trail Diaries, it was. Or was it was it a Danny wow. Hart thing? <laughs> anyway, it was one of those two. Uh, I think it was Danny Hart, actually, wasn't it, Joe? And we did a... Yeah, Danny Hart thing, you're right, yeah. Uh, God, yeah, so that was, ago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was like... Well, that was the that was the year he won Worlds, so it was 2011, I believe. Um, and me and Stu Thompson, uh, it was MTB Cup back then, we did a, a kind of a documentary thing about Danny's... Uh, Danny's win at World Champs at Champery. Did a little documentary. That's how I met Joe. Um, and then since then, obviously we've worked together a bit on the World Cup, and um, you know we've become good friends over that time. Um, but I started originally in probably filming. I started just as a kid in I don't know 2006, 2005, something. Just filming right. mates uh, at the local woods, and then kind of progressed from there doing a few races and stuff and then just built up built up built um built different relationships met different people got with got in contact with Stu and then worked with him for a while and then yeah I've been doing world cups now since 2008 um, okay and that's working with like different teams obviously yeah. yeah yeah um started off with like the chain reaction guys and then quickly got a, a deal with the lapier team and then kind of worked with the Lapierre team from 2010 I think it was until up until when me and Joe started doing the film which was the end of 2016 um, and that was kind of my main gig um, for those years and it was really good working with uh, Blanky, Cam, Loic, Loris, uh, Finn, you know Emmeline and then all the other guys as well um, over the years so yeah, yeah and then now we're here. Just so like Joe then are you, uh, are you sort of like self-taught did you get thrown at the deep end? Yeah, I mean, mainly self-taught, but uh, I did go to uni for a year, but I wasn't really that stoked on it, and I was... Wow, we don't meet many people like that up here, do we? <laughs> <laughs> we only have one uni. <laughs> do you only have one? I in thought, the north. I thought it was yeah, two. in the north, yeah. <laughs> Is it not two in Sheffield? <laughs> nah. <laughs> That's right. All right, so you went to uni, to what, doing like... Have I missed like, a joke? Stuff? Did I miss a no, uh, no. joke there? <laughs> 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 Um, yeah. yeah, no, I uh, yeah, went to uni, but I wasn't stoked on it, so I kind of just, I was already doing stuff for uh, Stu and doing mountain bike stuff, and I was just more keen to do that, so I just dropped out. Um, yeah, but it's mainly mainly just teaching myself and learning off. I've, oh, I tell you what, I learned a hell of a lot from Joe this year. Really? Uh, in oh. the editing, I've, no, but in the editing process, I, I learned 
something that changed my editing life, which was uh, editing a bit different to what I normally do, which was normally I would edit to the beat, but I kind of realized that you could edit a little bit off the beat and edit to the action instead. And I don't know, it's one of the things I've I've learned this year from Joe, always learning. Wow. So, uh, cool. That's cool. Yeah. I yeah, thought you were going to say just staying up way too late and being broken. <laughs> oh, I already, already knew that one. You learned that you can still be alive after four Red Bulls in a row. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it is possible. I can't touch that. I remember when we first started filming, and if you had to stay up late at World Cup something editing and you had a energy drink, it's just the worst thing you could do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Massive bonk further down the line. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, it's hard. We drank a lot of coffee, but I don't think we had any Red Bulls. Coffee. Really? And I think the key is if you know you've got to stay up late, you've got to put tape over all the clocks. Turn the clocks around you know. and put tape over the one in your laptop. Because if you see that it's like silly o'clock, you're just going to be even worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good tip, dude. I like that. I like that. I might have to adopt that one myself. I've pulled a few uh, all-nighters recently with this thing and... Uh, yeah, the clock watching is something that you do, do, don't you? You sit and just stare at it like, oh, my God, I should be... Oh, my... You're counting down, like, two hours sleep, one hour sleep. Oh, yeah. I find, cool. when, I find when you're doing an all-nighter, it, you just end up... I don't know. It ends up going really quickly. I, I find you you end up being, right. at like, sick. It's, it's already daylight. It's, like, comes so quickly. You're like, Christ. It was a minute ago. It was... My, my missus was going to bed, and now she's waiting to get up. You know what I mean? Yeah, your but, body always figures it out, too. You can catch up on sleep, apparently. Uh, yeah, apparently. But, yeah, apparently. all-nighters are the worst thing ever. They're horrible. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm interested to find out, like, how you guys... Obviously, you met each other just out in the field, just filming different projects and stuff, but how did you come to um, decide to make this film? Like, were you both at the same sort of point in your career that you were, like, a little bit, I don't know, not over doing the World Cup scene, but... You just wanted a new challenge, or Joe first? Um, I don't know, really. I think I definitely wasn't, like, over World Cups at all. Um, but at the same time, just really keen to do something outside of racing. Um, I kind of have always just loved downhill and just appreciate watching those top guys at the races. Um, guys and girls and just but at a race filming wise you can't maybe film how you'd want because obviously you're restricted by the schedule and the other bits and bobs you've got to do and you're only going to see him a set amount uh, mm -hmm. per day so yeah it was I think that's where the whole concept of the film came from is just we wanted to kind of showcase what certain riders can do when they're outside of the tape and yeah kind of have free reign and so do we filming wise yeah i think that's where it came do you think like as a filmmaker you quite kind of like um oh god i wouldn't say stuck in like your you know you can't like fully go wild on your like your creativity because you're trying to produce a product for a company does that make sense uh, kind of i think it's it's just a different style of filming at a race. You're documenting. You're not. You're not. Uh, you're not like searching for bangers and stuff like that. It's just. Yeah, I guess you're, like, like Aaron worked with the Specialized and Lapierre crew, and I've always been with the Santa Cruz Syndicate, and you are. Just documenting them basically mm. at these events, and obviously mm. trying to tell their story of the week, and yeah, sometimes you'll have like a set idea of, right, I'm going to get this and this and this. But yeah, most of the time you're just kind of, yeah, filling in the blanks and uh, running and gunning, I guess. Yeah. 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 You definitely, you definitely under time pressure more at a World Cup, and you? You're, oh, just, yeah, you're just smashing yeah. it. Like you're just trying to get content basically that kind of um, tells the story of what you're doing. It's t yeah, it is totally different. Yeah. So what about yourself then, dude? Like coming into this, we as well like just looking for new challenges. You want to do something a little bit out of the norm? Yeah, it's probably similar to Joe, really. Like just on the racing side of things, I've yeah, I've done quite a 
you know, done quite a few projects on the racing side of things and it kind of felt like I wanted to do something that wasn't racing because, you know, mm -hmm. something I'd not really, you know, like a big project. I've done a couple of big projects, but they've always been kind of revolving around racing. So I think similar to Joe, I just kind of fancy doing, really fancy doing a full length film, which wasn't about racing. You know, like you were saying, it's better for your creativity. You kind of, you're in control of everything that's going on. Um, yeah. And I think people were just a bit more, maybe a bit more stoked about, you can get people actually really wanting to ride the bike. Racing is a certain thing like you, you, you're informing people and hopefully entertaining them as well, but maybe not necessarily really what, like getting them on their bikes, like wanting to really ride. Whereas I think with a, you know, what we wanted to do with this film is to kind of really like get people stoked to ride their bikes with it. I think like, you know, full length films can kind of do that um especially when the when it's all about having fun which is kind of a big part of our film i think is the riders are you know every segment they're all having like a lot of fun on their bikes so i think that's the you know that's one cool thing about it yeah for sure i mean obviously we've had um a sheffield premiere which was sick i think it was what 700 people rocked up give or take i think it was like well was it seven thousand wasn't it like 7,000, yeah. <laughs> Sold out Don Valley Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was 450 seat in. Oh, right. And okay. then, but yeah, no, it was, we sold out, which was amazing. Kind of oh, didn't expect that. It was, it was weird in a good way. It was really cool. Just seeing everyone, uh, like before, even at the bar before, and then obviously when you, down at the front before we press play, just kind of looking up like, oh, shit. <laughs> it was hilarious when you walked down and everyone started cheering. It was so <laughs> funny. And then Joe walked back up the stairs out of the like, down again. and everyone was booing. <laughs> 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 it was so good, dude. But, like, yeah, it's such a good night. I mean, obviously, you know, it's crazy because for us, you know, most of our friends were there to watch this thing that, that you've created. And it's just, it, you know, it's still trippy now, like, Thinking back, I mean, you know, without going too deep into it, I remember you literally first picking up a camera. I think you filmed me once at, Mon at um, <laughs> Jippo Trails off a phone, and I'm pretty sure it was, like, the first thing you ever filmed. <laughs> Probably. Um, yeah, crazy. And obviously, there's been a few more premieres around the world, so you've had, like, Morzine, you got one in Whistler coming up pretty soon, right? You got Santa Cruz really shortly. Yeah, in, we did... In, Sheffield was the first one, and then it went. We had there was a fundraising uh, event in the Lake District for oh right for multiple sclerosis. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head the name of the actual event, but it got shown there um, up in Keswick. So that was cool. That was straight after, uh, and then yeah, Morzine, yeah, and then it's going to Santa Cruz. Whistler, Queenstown was the other day as well. Yeah, I mean, we're just, me and Aaron at the moment, we're, we're trying to work out what we're going to do, aren't we? It's been cool. A lot of people have got in touch wanting to kind of spread the love of the yeah, film. Yeah, probably too many people. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's mad. It's cool. Just hearing from all these people all over the place who were just, like, literally were just like Aaron just said about making people want to ride the bike and it being a fast and fun kind of film and hopefully it's worked and people yeah, just kind of want to show it and the the premieres were definitely sick i would like that's probably the the best part of it isn't it like what like sitting down with a group big group of people and watching it and i don't know i think the sheffield one was rad and then the what the the World Cup one, the one uh, in Croatia that we had oh, yeah, like, the week after. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think. I'm like, I'm sure there's one more. Where was it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that one was that, amazing. That one was so yeah. good. I yeah. I loved I loved like that one. It was so good. I was to way more nervous for that one. Were you? What's that? I was way more nervous for that one. Were you? Um, I think I was. I was kind of thinking like, oh man, if Brooke doesn't like this, he's going to go and knock me out. <laughs> Have they not, are they, those guys not seen the sections? No, wow. first time. I think I was wow. more and nervous obviously... for the Sheffield one, to be honest, because it was the first time anyone had really seen it. And then after the Sheffield one, because everyone kind of 
well, it seemed like everyone liked it. I was a little bit bit more put at ease for for the one at the World Cup. I think I was just more excited to see what everyone thought. But I was a little, obviously, still a little bit nervous. But I kind of was. You feel like the confident. World Cup one could have been a bit more critical because it's not necessarily just. I mean, not saying everyone were friends yeah. and family, but out of the four hundred and fifty people there, especially Joe, like you'll have known three hundred. Do you know what I mean? I knew about I knew about ten people. <laughs> we never even got a chance to meet, did we? <laughs> No, what was that all about? <laughs> Man, I don't know. It was crazy. I was looking forward to meeting you, Davey. The amount of times oh, no. we've uh, talked on Facebook and <laughs> never met. All okay. right. It's don't the worst part. That. Worst part of the evening, <laughs> I didn't get to meet you. I know. I know. I was too busy signing autographs to you. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know. So, all right, let's get back to the film a little bit. So, you, the premise of the film... Obviously, you guys have an idea. Let's make a film. But how do you freestyle the idea of of, of actually coming up with like the name, for example? <laughs> the Ooh. name. Oh god. Go on, Aaron. You go for that one. The name. I've just got nightmares of sat in your living room trying to think of an. Well, not even that. Just we had the whiteboard, didn't we? Yeah, I remember we the, had whiteboard the whiteboard in Joe's yeah. living room. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, but not even just that. We had multiple stints of just sitting down trying to think of a name, and then we ended up going with the most obvious name of all time, like <laughs> Duncan. Corbin, do you know? Um, do you know was what any of the other ones were? What could it have been? What we could had, it have been? It was initially it was going to be all in, wasn't it? Yeah, that and was. We were yeah. set on all in, and then another bike company came out with a. a oh documentary called all in and we were like no yeah. <laughs> we had to go back to literally go back to the drawing board that was the, <laughs> that was the perfect name i think all in i mean it, it gamble's obviously good as well but well i think it is it's got all short, in I think, all in would have been good yeah Something so obviously like, like the one the one syllable kind of like boom or two just yeah, keep yeah. it short like earth sprung true yeah, fair point. Rome. Yeah, Rome. Yeah, fair point. Yeah. It's got to be simple, wouldn't it? Mud cows. <laughs> it started to, it started to get... <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Such a good film. Yeah, for sure. So obviously, you okay, so you come up with a name. I'm just trying to like walk through this a little bit more so even I understand it. Um, so you come up with a name and then how do you build on that premise? Like if it was called All In, were you still going to go down the route of... Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we don't want to give too much away. We want everyone to go out and buy this damn thing on the 15th of may we already but, um, yeah we already had the we already had the um the whole kind of concept in mind before you know we were already quite far in by the time we i think we we we'd, we'd already even proposed everything and we were like deep in the planning stage before we came up with a name i don't think we came up with a name until probably after we well yeah i think we'd started filming but it was pretty close before um we actually started filming that we came up with the name it was it took us right. ages it took us ages to do the name so so it's just a you're sending proposal out with like insert name here like <laughs> yeah that was it it was the proposal we had we had the name enough, you can have you can name no, it, it was too. the initial it was the initial the initial first proposal. time it didn't have a name then when we did the full-on proposing yeah. bit it had a name didn't it but it did and take a long time yeah um no we had the like yeah we had we had the idea of the whole like i guess snatch lock stock idea of bringing everyone around the table like they're doing that poker scene at the start of Lockstock and picking basically a selection of riders uh, to be at the table and then building on each of their characters and personalities and creating the sections we kind of always had that in mind I think definitely really yeah yeah I think that was yeah just the initial yeah, thing that spurred it all, I guess. Right. So you both spoke about it, and then it's like, yeah, like, like you know, you both like it. You're not fighting against each other. At the end of the day, that the the riding is the easy part, isn't it? Like the riding's to to come up with a concept for riding. That was easy. It was just we wanted to show speed. So that was, you know, that's set. That's done. It was it was the stuff outside of that which was I think is the most important part that kind of sets. Uh, yeah, shooting the riding is the easiest bit, isn't it? Yeah. I think we had a pretty clear sort of con like clear idea of what we wanted to do with that from years ago. I think that's what we've kind of always wanted to do to sh do a film that's all about speed. Um, and then 
it was just that kind of off the bike stuff which was which needed you know needed thinking about and and working out and that kind of sets the whole that sets everything for the film as well like it's the branding the name uh you know everything all the all the imagery and stuff has kind of been based around that concept um so yeah so how do you obviously once you've got the idea the premise how do you then get this thing off the ground like how do you how do you go about approaching obviously you guys have got loads of industry ties right but like how do you approach brands is it an email is it like how you know how does it go i think that's definitely like one of the most overlooked parts in terms of how much work and time all that stuff takes the pre-planning um yeah going to the sponsors and trying to find a budget and yeah obviously trying to work out how that budget is going to work and planning everything and where you're going to go getting in touch with different locations and people who are going to help you out and you know just trying to i guess make a plan i guess as well when it comes to the sponsors have you almost like got you got one hit at this it's like it's got to look sick off the get-go otherwise i mean you guys have obviously got reputations to back you up right like you know you've created amazing videos and content for you know but not full films years. though not exactly full films. yeah that so was not full thing, film yeah. so this is yeah it was a bit of a jump in the jump in the deep end, I think, for the sponsors that actually did support us. I think it was okay. pretty. It was cool that they that they actually, you know, supported the uh, the concept because I think we don't have a track record for doing anything film wise, and what we wanted to do was pretty full on, and you know, it mm. cost. At the end of the day, it was a bit of an investment for these companies to throw a load of cash at, at a couple of. You know, squids basically, who who've never, <laughs> never done a you know a full length film like this before. So, um, mm. we must have That's we must have done something right, I guess. So, <laughs> well, obviously, yeah. I mean, for sure. So, all the companies you wanted involved, pretty much, back to you. I think one thing we spent a lot of time on was basically the kind of the design and the feel and like the whole concept like basically sam mcqueen who's you'll probably never get enough credit for the amount of stuff he did for this whole thing like from like the colors to the fonts the logos to just the websites the proposal just and filming and photography he's wow. just piled he should in be on, on this podcast bro. he should be here he should he should his spelling's bad though and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, i knew you're gonna bring that up <laughs> Mono gets that. Do you get that joke? No. You notice he spelt Premier wrong on the things, no? I did I did message you, but you never replied. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> I was like, Premier's got any on the end, dude. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. <laughs> Funny. Anyway. Maybe it was a challenge. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Queenie has been, yeah, the, he has been the, uh, <clears throat> the hidden, like, well, not hidden to us, but I guess to a lot of people who've seen the f- who are going to see the film queenie's done a hell of a lot of you know work behind the scenes on this so yeah yeah definitely yeah. uh definitely props to queenie and we owe him a few a few beers for sure Probably we did like beers. this proposal basically where because in the past like if you've ever pitched a project normally you kind of you've got your idea you stick it in maybe a pdf or uh you know a template of some sort and then send it off but it kind of felt like it, this kind of project deserved a bit more. If you're asking for more, you should maybe do a bit more. And working with Sam, we kind of came <coughs> up with this idea of making a website that was password protected. And you, we basically created this big one-page scrolling, like parallax-style website, which had interactive videos, pictures, like really? all this cool imagery. Like really early on, we got... Um, a couple of riders to do like photos like kind of in character mm. so like oh, yeah, yeah. Aaron got some stuff done with Loic like in his suit all suave and like then we got Walmart shirt that I picked up from down the road and a tie and uh, that that was really cool like you know smoking a cigar just looking like a boss it was pretty cool and then uh, my sister uh, does like design stuff and she created this you know brook and blanky's characters are like uh, like outlaw motorcycle gang member kind of dudes and um we wanted to get some kind of 
studio style shots of Brooke kind of looking gnarly, all black and white, and she made this like uh denim cut off denim jacket style thing with patches with his name on big bulldog one uh and yeah just basically we put a lot of effort into that stuff and i think i think it paid off yeah pe- obviously these guys are used to getting the, the normal pdf like this is what we're gonna do so it just like yeah put you straight in the going back to what i said as well like um stoked bank yeah going back to what i said about us being squids as well i, we, I think we needed it I think we needed something a bit different to like get yeah. get their attention. You know, show what I mean? that you're serious as well. Like, yeah, I think so. If we'd have just gone in with a bog standard proposal, I don't think we'd be where we are now. So, like Joe mm. said, I think it was definitely very important. I think to do something a little bit m- more than <clears throat> the standard thing. So, okay, yeah, big up Queenie, big up Queenie. If we props it, Queenie, yeah, 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 props to Queenie. Cheers, Let's mate. get him on here one day. <laughs> Should do. That'd be an interesting <laughs> podcast. Yeah, maybe. He's quite a quiet <laughs> lad, though. <laughs> He's pretty hard to track down. Um, okay, so the premise is sorted. You know, and that you know, what was the what was the general feedback from all of these potential sponsors? You know, before before they agreed to give you some cash, basically. <laughs> Let's not beat around the bush. <laughs> I think we basically went to the people we'd worked with the most over the years. Obviously, that's like your first stop, and. So, for example, like, Santa Cruz were amazing from start to now, and they came on board straight away, which was really cool, and uh, they kind of, like, title-sponsored it with Maxis uh, straight from the get-go, and it was, it was... I always get... The one thing I always worried about when we first got going was we kind of wanted to stick to our guns on on the riders... But obviously, mm. in a lot of the other full-length films you see at the moment, they're usually quite uh, brand-specific riders because that brand has backed the film. Yeah, yeah, they want the rider. Yeah, in which is you know yeah. fully understandable. But um, for this, I think Santa Cruz just just got the idea and that we wanted to try and do something a bit different, and they were just into it and they just and they just backed it. Same with Maxis and Fox and Envy and everyone else involved and. That was really cool, I think. Just like they just wanted to be involved with a with a cool project, hopefully. And mm-hmm. yeah, so fair play. That was yeah, appreciate so it. Stepped up. Yeah. Don't want to get too deep into the financial side of it, but you know, rough figure. I mean, what on earth do you guys have to? I mean, how many figures are we talking to to get this thing off the ground? Uh, Similar to Avengers: Infinity. Hmm. <laughs> oh man i mean is it i don't know man it's obviously it's always gonna be a tough subject and we don't want to like out anyone on here at all that's not what we're about but i mean i can imagine something like what you guys have done with the locations you've been and the you know the look of it and the whole the whole thing must have cost a, it's a decent investment right it cost a lot <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I think yeah, for yeah, I don't know how much what it costs. We, we have to ask the accountant. We've got the accountant there. He can tell us. <laughs> we'll hit him up after. He's on, he's on at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think for what we did and for like the soundtrack that we ended up with, we did it on a real shoestring like compared yeah, to what it could have been for sure. Like Even yeah. though we obviously, you know, it, it, it does cost a lot to produce something full length. But yeah, there's loads of hidden things that I guess unless you were a filmer, you wouldn't really know about. And even, we, like, we didn't know about it because we were learning along the way. Like, yeah. uh, the music especially, that it's just an absolute minefield. Um, but luckily we had a really cool music supervisor guy called Gary from IHIB, and um, he was awesome. Kind of held a hand. and uh, Really? Just, yeah, he went, he went all in for us, didn't he? He did. Yeah. And how do you find these people? Like how did you find Gary? That was a that was a recommendation by a good friend of Robert Mead. He uh, right. He gave us that one. So okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was, yeah. It's all it's all down to that, you know. Like people, you know, people know people and they recommend you, and that's how it all works, really. So um, yeah. But yeah, we've definitely landed on our feet with with Gary. He he hooked us up proper. 
with a few of the tracks that yeah, we've got. The so. music's insane. I mean, obviously, we're not we're not gonna release too much info before you guys have bought the goddamn film. But uh, yeah, the music fits perfectly, right? Like it, it's super sick. Yeah, I mean, we've. I think we can we can say, can we, Joe? We can say we've got. When does this come out again? Is this on the day? On the when day, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I thought was it on the day. No, it's a few days before. All right, cool. A bit of a build up, oh, right? Sweet. Before, all right, for anyone listening, we're, we're recording this in advance too, so it's uh, it's 30th of April, right? Yeah, something like that. All right. No, the soundtrack like, I, I, was like... Go on, Joe. Sorry, I'm talking over you. It's one of the no, rules sorry, that sorry, we was, came up with at the start. I couldn't work out. I was talking over you. You go for yeah. it. Oh, no, no, I was, I was going to start listing bands, but you were going to say something actually content-wise, so go for it. <laughs> um, no, I was just going to say... I think you can film the best footage ever um, with some of the fastest riders, but if you don't have decent music and audio, it can just, you know, it's, it's more than half of it. It's, it's mad. And we, it's funny, we kind of like, <laughs> we knew we wanted a really good soundtrack, but we didn't really budget for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we kind of got to the end and we were like, oh. Uh, we ran out of money. Yeah. How are we gonna do this then? We're... Acoustic set. I know we're, we're gonna get on Garage Band and just start hitting buttons. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you got all the stuff you wanted, right? Like, there's a few. There's a few. Big we got more than we film. wanted. We got. Do we definitely really? got more than we wanted? Yeah, we. We didn't think like one of the tracks is obviously in Steve's section is Arctic Monkeys, yeah. and Boom. we did not think we were gonna get that. We even edited really? it to a different song, and then because we didn't even think it was worth messaging or like at least like it, we didn't think it was worth trying. The Arctic Monkeys were it's too big time, no way, never. <laughs> and then we didn't get the song that we had before, and then we we're like, well, fuck it, let's just try. And then I think Steve knows one of the band members, and he put a text. I was in. gonna say Steve's gonna be connected, isn't he? Yeah. Every, there was a time, Mono, right? If you lived in Sheffield, where when they were big. Everybody knew somebody who was in the Arctic Monkeys. Right. Like, and knew, Sean you know B. I mean? Like, you knew the Gran or Gran's got a dog who goes walking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone knows someone in the Arctic Monkeys. I'm pretty sure I could make two phone calls and find Alex Turner right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was going to say the other one's Sean Bean. Everyone, everyone knows yeah, someone who knows exactly. Sean Bean. Yeah, this, well, there's those guys and, and Steve Pete and Sean Bean. That's pretty much yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, so we got. We got basically they were like stoked on it for some reason. They wanted to have wow. out their their music in a in two squids bike movie. Is basically I guess because Pete. I reckon they were stoked on on having a, yeah. a song over Pete section. So, um, but That's yeah, we sick. were That's like sick. that was just one of the tracks that we were just stoked on. Couldn't believe we got it. We were pinching ourselves a little bit when when it had, when we got the confirmation. We were like, no way. Couldn't wow. believe it. It was yeah. funny because like at the premiere, it's like. Obviously, it's in Sheffield, and loads of people were saying, like, oh, my God, they got, they got Arctic Monkeys. Like, you know, I was sat, obviously, on a row with a bunch of friends, and everyone was like, oh, my God, they actually got it. Sick. Did you Real know? Cool. Did you like, not know it before? It was the first time you... No, I do not. Honestly, like, me and Joe barely talk, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. That's pretty quiet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you did, for sure. For sure. It's cool that people right. appreciated it, though. Because uh, I guess not many... The thing is, it's like, like Joe said, dude, like the, the, the soundtrack can 100% make one of these films. I mean, yeah. I still I've, like crank out the old New World Disorder soundtrack in the van when I'm driving. Like, do you know what I mean? It, mm. There's certain things. And I was talk obviously we did a Death Grip special a while ago in like Ollie Wilkins section. I don't know why, but for some reason, that's just, like, an awesome song. fits so perfectly. So the Dirt, the Eric, the Dirt Eric, Eric B, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I love that one. It was such a It just vibe. makes it, right? Yeah, that was that was mint. I love that section just because it was... And I, I reckon I've got like every bike film soundtrack on Spotify in the <laughs> playlist. Just yeah. like whenever you're traveling, just put one on. Just, yeah. It's weird, isn't it? You probably I listen think you've, to def like you've definitely fans. achieved that with this film. Hopefully. For sure. That's is there a Gamble we would... playlist yet? There is, Not yeah. Yet. We were going to oh, drop it on the 15th. Yeah. So get that on Spotify. And you can listen to this episode on Spotify too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, obviously, the narration is uh, is Bricktop from Snatch. I want to know. 
how on earth you managed to pull that off? Because you guys spoke about it briefly at the premiere in Sheffield about how kind of hard it was to get him, but how important was it for you guys to get to get that guy? I reckon that was like an on... I, for me, that was on par with the Arctic Monkey song, for yeah, sure. Really. Yeah, me too. It, from, like, conception of the whole film, like, the whole Snatch Lock Stock thing, you instantly think Bricktop and his voiceover in one of them and his character. And it's, yeah, it was a joke, but then <laughs> we kind of didn't talk about the voiceover for ages. And then when it got down to like, right, we need to actually, you know, get someone booked in. I just did a bit of Googling and saw that, you know, he's like 80, 81 now and um, doesn't do much acting anymore. He does more voiceover stuff and he's part of you know, one of these agencies down in London that's got lots of different voiceover people. And just thought, oh, it's worth an email. Uh, this is a, this is probably halfway through last year, though, quite a while ago. And got an email back pretty quick and they were interested. But after that, like, we got a bit busy, but at the same time, they just they weren't returning any mails calls like nothing and we're like ah like but anyway yeah we were busy filming and we kind of started to leave it a bit late and (laughs) it got to like i don't know end of feb (laughs) we were like we haven't it was a bit late wasn't it actually we did have a yeah it was wasn't it i mean we can't we did have a plan b like we didn't though we kind of had a plan b (laughs) (laughs) we had a few picked out didn't we like but none of them yeah as good were they that was the problem yeah it's like a synonymous voice yeah I think once you've got the, if you're like writing the script with his voice in your head anything else just doesn't seem as good mm. um, but it was then, mad wasn't it it was absolutely mad did yeah. you go spend the day with him too yeah yeah oh, a couple of hours then, it literally hours. came down to sec- when were we in Tennessee second week of March yeah yeah uh, First, well, I was uh, first and second week of March, yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. it was like D-Day. We either, it was like, you know, either we've got to get a yes or a no today or we find someone else kind of thing. And <laughs> uh, I just kept calling the agency. <laughs> In one day, we probably called them like 15, 16 times until finally someone picked up. And I got through to the person I spoke to on email. And I think they were just... They were a big agency and they were really busy and it's quite a small job. Let's them, give them, compared to let's give them the benefit of the doubt, shall we? They were busy. Yeah, they were busy. <laughs> really? <laughs> classic. And, and they were just like, oh, yeah, it's free, whenever. He's not too busy. Like, when do you want to come down? <laughs> it was just, in the end, it was like dead simple. And it was like, yeah, we just literally got back from that Tennessee uh, race and testing trip that me and Aaron were on and... Yeah, we got the train to London the next day. It was yeah, it was cool, wasn't it? It was sick, and we did. We didn't. <laughs> we never even like to, when we first did the like came up with the film. Yeah, we were doing the whole lock, stock, snatch thing, but it didn't even enter our heads that we would have Alan Ford doing the voiceover. Like that wasn't even that wasn't even a thing. We were just like. I, it was just we when you like Joe, you were just scrolling through a, an agency list, and then he was there, like just randomly on a list, and then you were, you were like, "Holy fuck! Like, this would be amazing! Like, it's it's that guy's brick top. We got to have him." And it was like, "Oh well, yeah, that would be cool," and ended up happening. So, but uh, yeah, again, it was... it's like the soundtrack. Yeah, it's one of those things that just makes it. And I don't think anything similar has been done in a mountain bike film, as far as I'm aware. It's like narrated like that. Maybe not, but I think um, we were definitely back right at the beginning when we were taking sort of inspiration from other films. Um, some uh, there's a skate film called Pretty Sweet. Uh, oh right. And they had it. They've, there's a series of them, and they always have like a celebrity kind of, uh, you know, a celebrity cameo in those films. And in Pretty Sweet, it's Jack Black, and he does a bit of filming on it, and it's amazing. Oh. And I, I guess it's one of the things that we. It has been done before in extreme sports movies, and it's kind of a thing yeah. where you're like, "That's really sick." And we kind of never thought it would happen, but we ended up having like <laughs> brick top. So it was, yeah, it was pretty cool. Boom out the out the park. 
out of the park. And then, obviously, most important thing, well, not most important thing in the film, but one of the most important things is the riders. Um, you guys sit down and make a, a list of who you wanted in it, like a hit list. Yeah, again, it was sat in Joe's living room on the dreaded whiteboard. <laughs> you spent a lot of time up here, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Duncan's I have, actually. Room. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was Dunk's living room. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Dunk. That yeah. big crew in the living room. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, fun times. Mm. So, and did you get every rider you wanted? It was super film? hard. I think because when we were first trying to work out what we were going to do ideas-wise, I mean, this, like, at the moment, there was, there's so many good riders in there. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, it seems like everyone knows a rider who could be, like, pro almost. <laughs> like, um, I think what it pretty much came down to for us is, like, it was, you know, it's the f first film we've ever done, and we were nervous, and obviously, like, there's a lot of unknowns. So we kind of went to who we've worked with yeah. in the past or currently, Mm. And that was the starting point, really. Um, so, and fortunately enough, from being at the World Cup, uh, we know a lot of fast people, and we just, yeah, that's we kind of ended up with that crew in the end, and we've all kind of either worked with them in the past, um, or we might have just you know love the way they ride, or always wanted to kind of film with them. But it was hard. There's so many really? people. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy these days. And I guess hard to get them all to commit at the right times. Mm. Is, that, is that a difficult thing too? Definitely, especially during the season. Um, oh, really? You filmed during the season too? Some, yeah, 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 I mean... I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit of it. Oh, obviously, there was a lot filmed out of season as well, but there was definitely yeah. a few. I, I guess we were lucky with a lot of the shoots we did in the season. We had PE, who's uh, retired now, and I uh, don't know if you've heard that. And <laughs> it's not World Cup racing anymore. And uh, oh. Bra uh, Rat and Craig, that was during the season, they've also retired. Mm -hmm. And I think the only one who... Who else did we do during the season? Connor was the only one, I think, really. Uh, Loic was Loic was just out of season, but he did a bit of... He did do a bit of building. He came out to Madeira and did a couple of days building just before Worlds. Um, okay. Just before we did Worlds, uh, won Worlds. Probably why year. he won, I think. I think it yeah. probably was, yeah. It was good training for him, yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely, yeah. definitely is. <laughs> but yeah, it was difficult. It was definitely a challenge get, getting everyone lined up. And even out of season, all these guys are obviously got strict training schedules, a lot of them. And um, so, yeah, that was definitely a big challenge of it was getting everyone mm. lined up at uh, races who've, who've got these schedules and getting them, getting them onto a filming program it was quite tricky sometimes but okay. I, the, the hardest thing actually thinking about it the hardest thing was doing the the actual intro shoot in sheffield where, where we got everyone together and right. got them in that boxing ring in sheffield that was <laughs> that was probably the biggest challenge why was it hard just getting everyone there like yeah we had uh 10 10 riders 10 of the top downhillers a week before the, the world cup in fort william and you know just getting them getting them all in one place was a bit of a it wasn't really a mission in the end actually it was quite good all the team managers helped out and they were all on board with it but um yeah i think uh but it was it was a bit of a worry beforehand wondering if we were gonna yeah. actually get everyone together but it worked yeah, out one yeah. guy could throw that whole scene out really eh? <laughs> in hindsight now yeah and i think greg greg wasn't i think greg came on the sunday so he couldn't come on the Saturday, so we were a little bit dodgy there, but we kind of managed to, you know, shoot around that, and, and in the end it was okay because we kind of um, did all the wide shots on Sunday and then did some other stuff on Saturday, and it was kind of, yeah, we, ah. we made it work. But, yeah, if if one person hadn't been able to come for both of the days or whatever, it would have probably... With Josh and Craig, it was all right because we kind of... Um, you know, worked around it and made it a part of the story almost. But if any of the other mm. guys didn't come to that, it would have thrown it out a little bit for sure. Um, so, yeah. I think that, that was... It's probably been one of the coolest things for me. Like, the whole film press is just, like, how hard the riders committed to, like, making it happen. I mean, mm -hmm. they didn't... Like, to come to Sheffield, 
Right. <laughs> Where was it? Uh, Glen Road Boxing Gym on Burton Street. It's near Hill. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, other side of Hillsborough. Didn't and you like... take them to Rotherham as well? But yeah, Brian <laughs> Keefe and Brooke went on a field trip to Rotherham. J. James cycles. Yeah. <laughs> nice shot. Shit hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we had probably three, yeah, two days most of them. Three, I think Blanky and Finn came a day early. And, like, you know, this is like a week before Fort William. And they all committed to coming here and doing all of that, which was really cool. I'm pr- like, a lot of sitting around for them in a really hot, <laughs> sweaty boxing gym. Mm. <laughs> and uh, it was a it was a mission, but it it worked out really well. I think that was definitely cool. Yeah, as a six kit, like that, that whole stuff at the beginning is real cool. Kind of like sets you up for the for the film, really, right? It's yeah. rad, rad. He pulled in a few extras too, so you had like Berg, who's obviously <laughs> a mutual friend of mine, and Jerry's and Dale, who's my business partner, <laughs> uh, played some parts. Jolly was in there too, obviously. Jolly the cards is. Mutual friend of ours, looking handsome as hell on that camera. Jolly got the yeah. biggest cheer of the night in Sheffield, I think. He did, he did, he did. Apart from Joe walking down the stairs, I think Jolly was next <laughs> biggest cheer. Yeah. Jolly got a bigger cheer than the end of the film, really, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a natural, what can we what can say? He's a natural, uh, natural born uh, dealer. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it turned out... Uh, it turned into like a pretty funny thing when we were editing. You'd see, like, I'd be looking at shots of Jolly, and I've known him since I was, I don't know, little. And I'm like, it's a really good shot, but it's Jolly. Like, I can't get my head around it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's just weird. But it was cool. Like, everyone, that was, you know, just like the riders, there's so many people who just helped along the way. Every, every shoe, every section, just friends, family, and every little place we went to, the locals always just going above and beyond, trying to help us out everywhere. Lots of people. For sure. Leads us on perfectly like to the next bit what I want to talk about, which is obviously, it seems like, especially the Sheffield section, obviously, is a bit of an omen to mountain biking in Sheffield and the amazing people involved and some of the rad stuff like, you know, Joe's been responsible for in Sheffield. I mean, come on, dude. Uh, He's shaking his head. But, you know, <laughs> some of that stuff, you know, you, you created it, dude. Like, Ride Sheffield and stuff like... Not Ride Sheffield. This is Sheffield. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is Sheffield and stuff like that, you know. And, and how important was it for you to pull friends in and get those guys involved? Spe- like, obviously, we're talking here about, about Steve's section, which is filmed at an iconic part of Sheffield to some people, um, which used to be a ski village. So can you talk a little bit about, like, that section and, yeah, like, what it meant to you to have it look that way, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. Um, Sheffield one, I think... I'm trying to think way back when we were talking about Steve's where to film. I think originally we, were, we weren't going to do it in Sheffield because we kind of thought, oh, the only place we can do something is Warncliffe, and that's kind of been done a lot, and... You know, we wanted to make sure it was going to be, each section was going to be special. And then I think we might have been thinking about Andorra at one point, I think. Was mm. it Andorra, Mono? Yeah, d- yeah, yeah, Andorra definitely was one of the one of the options. And then the ski village idea. I'm trying to think where it came from. I think basically... I have no idea where it came from, to be honest. <laughs> we were like... <laughs> Just before it burnt down, there's a group of us who were going up there uh, doing, like, volunteering, digging, trying to ye- basically get going with mountain biking up there and got a track going up there and uh, started testing the tea bar for using it with bikes. And it was kind of going places, and then obviously it burnt down and kind of stalled everything. So I guess we always knew that... Yeah, it was potential, potential on that hill. There. Yeah, I heard Duncan burn it down. He he always seemed to get pictures of it. Yeah, I don't know how he was always oh, so there at the right time. Up. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. I think <laughs> it was Dunk. Yeah, he'd get the front page of the Star within minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's always on his Facebook. It's like a live feed of the ski village. Oh, the ski village is burning down again. Oh, Dunk's there again. I wonder why that is. 
I think he's got state. I think he's got some shares in the ski village. That's why insurance scam. <laughs> he shorted it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. And then I don't know. I remember one day me and Steve went up there with John Dallow from Sheffield Council. He's been an absolute legend, as always. Uh, Dallow for Mayor Twenty Twenty. And then um, we kind of walked the old Iron Justice line, which you'll know, Davey, like from back in the day, there's the, the race uh, series, I guess, around Sheffield. It's almost like a duel, weren't it? Yeah. Four cross yeah. duel. Sort of. It's all over going, obviously, now, but there's that one pit jump that's still there because the hole's so big. <laughs> it's never really grown back. Um, and... Yeah, I think basically it just went from there. And it took a while. Really, really like planning, all that sort of stuff. Is that hard or? Yeah, for sure. That was the worst bit for you. It took a, just, it's a big job. It was like yeah. building an entire track down that whole hill <laughs> on a really limited budget. And basically between John Dallow, the guys from Bike Track, James from Revolution Bike Park as well, early on was really helpful um everyone just kind of piled in and then it just you know came down to that one day where it was like right are we gonna are we gonna do it and basically when we called it um steve and the guys at bike track walked kind of you know we had a real good line picked out because it was so overgrown at this point you know you could barely see yeah, yeah. the terrain see or anything underneath it like when Aaron came up. I'm sure he'll tell you he couldn't really picture it. <laughs> I couldn't picture it. I was like, are you mad? Like, you want to build a track in this, like, pretty much a dump? It's like, it was a, it was pretty much a rubbish dump. I was like, really? I, I, I had that viewpoint until, uh, like, to be honest, I had that viewpoint until, you know, when we started filming. I was like, actually, this is, this is sick. Um, it's kind of fitting, really, that like yeah. some pikeys took it over, as it's kind of like with the whole snacks theme, right? It's, it's yeah. kind of fitting. <laughs> it ended up being amazing, I think. I think it was awesome, and dude, a testament that to like section. that was a goosebump for me, like a goosebump moment in the in the cinema watching that. Cool, oh, like the whole cool. obviously, th there's there's emotional ties to it. Yeah, Joe, surely, like you know, with Steve, how he helped you get your career. Going. Yeah, massively. Maybe, maybe massively. It could be one of Steve's like final video parts too. So a bit of pressure with that. Have you thought about that at all? Or uh, no. Nah, Talking about Steve, really, I'm just going to no. crack open another Stella. <laughs> oh, go on. <laughs> He'll be proud. Do you have Stella down south? Uh, I brought them down from Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I brought them. From, they're Belgian, aren't they? Or French? Belgian. Belgian. I don't know, man. It's not cider. <laughs> yeah, Belgian. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, it was. Sorry, Jill, I was felt a pressure with Steve. Yeah. Like, it's that section. I mean, there's been so much work that had gone in to get the track going. And then when it came down to film, I was like, whew. <laughs> um, but it turned out better than we could hope, I think. Like, we got so so lucky with the weather really? like it, mm. it was crap either side of that yeah it was the day, day we came up we it was had. shit wasn't it and it was mid-season it was a bit hectic trying to get it like booked in and done and yeah it was lucky we definitely got really we lucky were, that week we were worried on the first day when when I the day that I came up and we went and walked it for well when I walked it the first time and uh, it was pissing down horrible, wasn't it? And we were looking at the forecast, we were like, oh, man. And when we were walking it, it was just all, like, claggy. And it was just, like, all... It was just wet and horrible. And we were just, like, not sure if this is actually even going to work. Because the conditions were so bad underfoot. But it dried out really well uh, for the start of filming. So we, we definitely got lucky that whole week. It was pretty much, you know, good conditions for the rest of the week. And then it pissed down the day the, the day after we finished, so... Yeah. I feel as well, did you aim to showcase a different style of Steve's riding? Yeah, I think. We knew from it, wasn't the start the it probably we wasn't the plan from the start, was it? It wasn't like we didn't go from the outset thinking, okay, let's let's show Steve differently. But I think when once you kind of came up with that, that location, it definitely 
you know, yeah, it wasn't going to be a standard rock garden downhill track, right? Like, yeah, it was. I guess we had to kind of play with what we had on that hill as well, because it's the, even though the actual terrain's pretty cool, like there's some good dips and you know little mounds and stuff on the ski features they used to had, and we kind of used them as best as we could. But um, yeah, it's pretty smooth terrain. There's no rock gardens or roots or anything. So it was tricky, you know, lots of jumps and berms and whoops. And I think one of the coolest things is the shipping containers. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Kellen Steel Yard guys, who literally just down the road from the ski village, they're like a shipping container uh, retail part thing. And he got in touch with Steve, I think, and just offered to help. And yeah, another crazy. How one. crazy is that? I know. And originally, so there's a step on, step off that you you guys will see uh, as like one of the last features of the line. And originally, we planned two thirty foot containers stacked on top of each other for Steve to kind of step up into a container and then out the other side. And then they're really hard to find thirty foot ones. So we ended up actually just getting two twenties, and then working out how to basically create a dirt roof. All the bike track guys did, and yeah, yeah made a dirt roof for these containers. It was pretty cool. <laughs> it's like a Norwegian house. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, the start round was two twenties stacked on each other as well, right on top of that lookout point, which is like a wicked landscape that you'll see in the start of this section. So, yeah, it worked out pretty good. Those shipping containers went down a treat at the premiere, didn't they, Joe? There's some real, there were some real yeah, fans of the ship. Yeah, there was a super ship. fan. There's a really? shipping container super fan. She loved the shipping containers. She just... she Appreciate just, a nice wrapped shipping container. She wanted to know where to get one. <laughs> we <were> like, oh. <laughs> she just loved it. She was just a Brilliant. massive super fan. All right, guys, I think now we should uh, pass over to uh, to a couple of guests. First up, we've got Jordan Gould, and then we'll have Mr. Steve Pete. All right, guys, <laughs> joining us <laughs> joining us now, we've got uh, Jordan Gould. Jordan is one of the head honchos at Bike Track, um, and has joined this podcast. We're just talking about Steve's section, obviously, which was filmed at the iconic ski village. Um, I guess you, you firsthand got either Joe or Mono or Steve calling you up and asking you to build this track, so like... What did you think when they when they came to you and asked you? Well, me and Steve originally had been um, quite a bit before the film was even talked about, I think, and we were just looking at a line in general, how cool it would be to put something on there. And mm. I actually dug a jump. The, the first jump that he hits on Gamble, um, I actually dug that in, well, helped dig it in 98. And right, right. we had a, a race down there called the Iron Justice, which was quite a, like a real iconic race in Sheffield, a dual race. Mm. So it all came from that really. And then um, I'd heard that they were going to try and put a film on there. And yeah. And then when they did ask, um, yeah, I was pretty stoked to, to be involved. <laughs> it's pretty cool to be able to build a track for Steve and obviously to have it in this film as well. Right. Like obviously Steve's a good friend of yours and so is Joe. And yeah, I mean, it was, um, <clears throat> I'm not a downhill and I don't claim to be, I've got a downhill bike, but, yeah, mm. to ride with him and build something for him is just, yeah, a dream come true. I think I was on a high for a couple of weeks after it, just, yeah, in absolute awe. And to be fair, I mean, yeah, what I built him probably could have been scaled up way bigger and he's just still here. He just, really? yeah, everything we built, he just hit flat out. So Yeah, yeah it's one thing Joe just mentioned, actually, it was like showcasing like a different side of Steve's riding as well. It's a bit more like free riding, I guess, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't want it to be a racer, racer yeah. track. We wanted it to be for him to be boosting stuff. And yeah, he, he is a good, good rider, like skillful wise, jumping. You don't see that side from him. You never really see that side from mm. him. But yeah, like some of the jumps we'd built, he was just whipping them and yeah, just playing with them big time. So yeah, it was so, really good. So throughout like the whole project, was there anything that was like a massive standout challenge for you guys as track builders? Um, yeah, like the, the access to the ski village isn't as good as you'd think. Um, so we wanted some massive containers. Uh, we wanted a big tunnel for him to go through and stuff. But the, the there's a bridge at the bottom of the ski village that is hard to access. So 
we couldn't get any um, any containers big enough to come through the the tunnel at the bottom up to ski village so we had to we had to change plans quite quickly on site um mm. with only a couple of days to go to filming and we'd made a conscious decision as well i, I didn't want to uh, timber the tops of them i wanted to put actual dirt on top of the containers so we the containers were sinking inside with the weight of the dirt so right. there was loads of challenges trying to prop them up and yeah get all that to stay on top of a container and yeah it was really good though um definitely challenging like thinking out of the, out of the box every yeah. two minutes just just to try and get the job done so for sure well an awesome section and no doubt people are going to be stoked to see it um for anyone who wants to keep up and sort of like in touch with the guys at bike track where can people find out more about like what you guys do they can follow us on instagram or or any social media outlet uh, facebook twitter um we keep up to date with our stories we tend not to put a lot about what we're building right now just just because we don't like to um have people turning up to where we're working we want to keep our environment safe but then as soon as the projects are done we tend to you know really hit them home yeah awesome all right dude Thanks for that. Appreciate it. And uh, no doubt speak soon. What's up, Steve? The Sheffield section is rad. Were there any other locations you wanted to film at on your radar? There was no other locations on my radar. It was always Sheffield. (laughs) Okay. How much input did you have into the look, feel of the track that you guys created? I had loads of input into the track. Um, worked a lot with Jordan from Bike Track. We walked it pre-dig and uh, created all the features to suit myself. That hill is an iconic Sheffield landmark. Did you know the potential of it coming into this project? We knew the potential of that hill. I actually skied on that hill 25 years ago, probably longer. Been using it ever since. Was there a sketchiest or scariest part of that track? Sketchiest and most horrible bit of the track was really the two containers at the top. Bit of a flat landing. Dirty, as Jordan would call it. Do you have a favourite section in the film? Uh, Lots of bits of each thing are my favourite. Blankies smashing those turns. Uh, I think my favourite start was actually uh, Connor Fearens when he was up on the ridge and the music kicked in. Also loved my little rat and uh, Craig Seven Evans just just showing them who they are, being themselves and having a laugh. You've been working with Joe Bow now for many years and uh, you obviously gave his, his career a good kickstart. Um, are you proud of the lad and this film? Yeah, I'm mega proud of Jobo. He's come a long way. Um, Sheffield boy and all that. It's been good to get him out all over the world and uh, show him what he show fucking thing. Let him show people what he's made of. Yorkshire grit. All right, man. Last but not least, why should people buy Gamble? People should buy Gamble because if they don't. We'll send my boys around to knock them out. <laughs> Brilliant. Let's hand back over to uh, to Joe and Mono. I think we don't want to give like too much away with the sections and stuff, but um, probably best doing this like... So, Mono, for you, what's your favourite section in the film and, and why? Uh, it's too difficult. A few people have asked me this and I can't... Honestly, it sounds... It's going to happen. No, it sounds lame, but... I can't choose a favourite. I've got favourites. They, I like all of them for different reasons. Yeah. There isn't any which I don't like, which is good. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. They're all, they've all got their different qualities for me. And as one of the things that we, we ended up kind of doing, not accidentally, but it wasn't something we set out to do originally, really, I guess. Not really. But most of the sections are kind of different. They've all got a little bit different. They've got different music or they've obviously oh, totally, got yeah. different styles. And um, so, yeah, I think, I think uh, yeah, they've all got different things that are good about them, I think. Um, I don't yeah, know I about you, that. Joe, but I think you're probably the same, aren't you? Yeah, they are all different. Like, for me, like, I guess the story and the location and the music and how everything is just, like, local to Steve in his sections is really cool. And then, like, the action in, like, 
maybe Blanky and Connors is ridiculous. Um, just cause I think a big part of it was the tracks were just tailored for that kind of their styles, I guess. It's kind of a mix, like uh, mixture. Really of, loose riders. It's kind of a mixture of both. I think. Films like this, you talk about with um, riders, like how do you want it to look, like how do you want to be depicted as a rider, etc. Or, or is it you guys saying we want to do this? <clears throat> Right, because some of the stuff was like custom made tracks, right? So surely Loix was fully custom made in Madeira, wasn't it? Right. So it, is that his own like blank canvas? Do what you want. Uh, y- yeah, I think uh, I-, I was gonna say Loix. Oh shit! I've just oh no, oh, I've just knocked. I've just knocked my beer over all over the carpet. Oh no! Oh, no. oh dear, oh dear! I can't get up because the show must go on. Hang on. Take, no, 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 take a moment, man. We can edit out. All just, right, let's edit this take, out. Take a cut. moment and sort yourself cut. out. Cut, cut. Hang on, new, new carpet, new carpet. <laughs> Hang on. Wait, I'll be back in a sec. I'm going to pour another wine anyway. Fat fuck it, we'll leave this in. In fact, while we're waiting for Mono to clean himself up, let's hand over to the man himself, whose section we were just discussing. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit more about it. So, Loic Bruni, take it away. Um, I've been to Madeira the year before the, the shoot and it was super cool to ride and beautiful. Uh, for Madeira, I was taking really good care of us and everything was going, uh, going well. So when we, we brainstormed on the, on the location, we had also another plan going to Tahiti. I figured out a pretty good plan, um, going there, uh, with the local guy that was really fast and doing good trails. But Mono didn't want to go, so I was like, okay, okay. <coughs> it was not so bad because Madeira is also really good, so I, I loved it. And I knew we had, uh, when you see what Brendan has done, and when you see how motivated the guys at Ferrari Madeira are, you know they're going to make something good happen. So it was a pretty easy option and pretty, pretty rad one. Uh so yeah, I chose it because of all I said. It was uh, working with guys I knew already and really uh, they were pumped up about doing a sick section. So uh, we just went there with uh, our ideas and our vision of the segment I wanted. And they were, they loved it and they were like, okay, let's do it there, there, there. So they were really uh, helping us on being stoked and everything and being super easy. Um, to find places, to find uh, uh, the 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 machine to do to build it, you know. So it was honestly uh, the best. Um, question three. Yeah, I was uh, I helped a little bit for the building, but I'm not good at driving the machine. It was Nikki Wiles, you know, from the UK. He was actually super rad at doing it, so it was cool. Uh, we had someone like him doing it, and he knew how to to shape the turns and the, the whoops and everything. So I had to stay only two days because I had to prepare for Cairns for World Champs. So I couldn't stay long enough, but uh, we we went there two days and we pretty much, we were going there with the, the bus of the of the park, of the national park and everyone, everyone was just stuck to have us here. And they're like, yeah, you can use pretty much everything you want. So we started a section next to the road. And actually, the, at the end of the first day, they came and they were like, no, 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 not here, everywhere except there. So we actually had uh, to restart a lot of things after the first day, but it was uh, it was okay. We still had uh, many other good options. And we, yeah, we did pretty much everything we wanted, except that we didn't have as much time as we expected. So we didn't finish the, the whole thing, but... <coughs> The guys, uh, the guys uh, of Freeride Madeira, they was totally uh, up with everything we wanted to do. And they, because we didn't finish, they went back with uh, shovels and finished everything by hand. So it was pretty pretty insane, all the work they did. Uh, question four. Yeah, like, I have a favorite section. Um, I think it's Blinky, of course. I love his style and uh, it's... Typically, like the, his segment is typically him, so I really like it, and it's really dusty, so it's kind of mind mind blowing, you know. But I really like my section too, to be honest. But the rider that was uh, standing out the most, like for me, huh, 
um, like Josh, Josh Red Boy was so was reading so well in in his segment, so I really liked it too. I like many segments. And honestly, everyone has his own uh, style, uh, really well uh, transcripted through the segment. So it's really interesting. Like my segment is me, you know. Blanky segment is Blanky. Brook is Brook. So it's really good. Uh, people should just uh, yeah should just download Gamble because the the hype has been way too long. So now it's time to fucking fucking buy it. And I think it's one of the one of the good bike bike videos. You know, we when we talk about Earth, about I don't know New World is all there, like all these kind of big videos. We always have a good memory of them, and it's always good to see a see parts of them in uh, in bars or whatever so this is going to be uh, the same kind of uh, of uh, product you know it's going to be so good it's a project that took a lot of time and it's uh, actually really really well uh, realized i think so it's going to be sick and people are going to love to see uh, everywhere uh, the good riders riding uh, good trails so it's going to be good and yeah cheers loic back into the main body of this podcast we go Joe, while we've still got you, fuck, man, I'm covered in wine. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, dude. I don't think you've got on your pillows. Um, what What was I going to say to you now? I can't remember. What's it like filming with Phil? Uh, Finn? Finn. Yeah. Funny. It looks hilarious. He's it's like... as wild as he looks. He's just... It's like having a little brother with ADHD and he's cracked two cans of Red Bull. Just like, he's just full of energy in a good way as well. Like, it that was a really good, that was probably the shortest shoot we did get. Where was, um, Pila. where did you film it? Pila. Pila in Italy. A classic spot, kind of, I guess, it was a World Cup venue back in like, Oh eight maybe, and a year, a couple of years before that, I think, um, sometime around then. And people still go there like quite a lot, I think, in the summer. Um, but I've never really been there or filmed there. Um, so how does that work then? If you've never really filmed there, and you're gonna go and film a section for your film, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how how does that work? Well, <laughs> just hoping that it's gonna be good out there or what? Like, have so you carried one. on? Did you carry on? <coughs> Yeah, we're carrying on, dude. Okay, sweet. I'm back. It's all right. We're just <coughs> talking about Pila. Oh, nice. Go for it. We just heard so much about the place. And Finn had been... To be fair, I'd been literally like a half a day years ago and remembered at least one of the tracks being amazing, super long as well. So on that track alone, we probably did most of the shooting. Um, there's one from like basically the top of the mountain right to the valley floor that's like nearly 20 minutes it's crazy um, and yeah Finn he's just so full of energy 24-7 that like even though you've probably got the shot he's just like oh I'll do it again and he'll just run back <laughs> up just like and then he'll do it run over to the camera check the shot it'll be really in- I think what was cool with Finn as well he's like really interested in like like how you how where yeah doing our work and like you know he checks up on you doesn't he you've got to be accountable check, yeah he does check up he like he checks up make sure you, you're getting the right shot yeah like he'll tell you oh I'm not keen on that angle what about this and suggest things which is really cool yeah um, I think we went through twice as many batteries as normal on Finn's shoot just because of the amount of because uh, every is that a young guy <laughs> that's kind of like a bit more socially aware like, do you know what I mean like with social media and stuff like that and how he wants to be portrayed <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. I've seen him on his phone a lot. I don't know if it's a running joke in the bike industry, but especially when he's been filmed, he seems to always be looking at his phone. He must be like a Tinder swiper supreme. I don't know. <laughs> he's got a girlfriend now, so I don't think he's on Tinder. Oh, he's not got Tinder. Confirmed. Nah, Just deleted. He's on the, <laughs> he's on the girlfriend is program. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, uh, yeah, he definitely girlfriend. switched on. Yeah. Like, he... I don't know, yeah. Like I was saying, he just, yeah, just worked, just worked hard. We had a good laugh. It was funny. And then, like you'll see in the credits, 
he's just constantly coming out with one-liners, even though he doesn't realise it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're like, you'd say you were talking about, I don't know, um, a certain type of car or something, and if you didn't know about it, like, you'd wake up the next morning <laughs> and be eating your cereal, and he'd be like, oh, so you know that car you're talking about? And then you'd just unleash everything you ever knew <laughs> about this car. Really? Yeah. Like, oh. like, he's like a sponge, man. He, he'll take anything. And so he'll just sit and research it at night on his phone. That's why he's on his phone all the time, because yeah. he didn't know something. He's yeah. trying to figure it out. That's cool. It's That's fucking cool. funny. Finn. He's clever. He's a clever dude, Finn. I, he, I'll give him a lot of stick, and he deserves a lot of it, but he is clever. <laughs> he is a clever dude. Good section anyway, like, people on... Yes, I mean, they're all amazing. Fast, I mean, fast. it's hard... Yeah, super fast. Hard for me to as well, like, like you guys, to pick a favourite. I mean, I've not seen it as many times as you guys. I've watched it once in a cinema after five beers. <laughs> One of them I had to drink, like, super fast on the way in, so I don't drink, so that was... Yeah. I do remember it, but, like, it was a bit, a bit blurry, <laughs> if I'm honest with you, that, <laughs> that evening. And, um, and then... Yeah, I watched it the other night. Obviously, you sent me a link, Joe, and uh, you know I, I sat watched watched through it. But um, I love the oh, man Conifering section. Um, Retallic. Can you tell? Yeah. Retallic. Oh, Retallic. Place of dreams. What a place. Oh. Yeah. I'll tell you what, anyone who who's going to to Whistler or, or Canada, or whatever BC, and uh, you've got a bit. of... But it costs quite a bit, I think, to do a weekend retaliate. But it's, I think, if you've, if you're able to save up and go, it's worth every penny. From what I saw, it's so good. It's amazing. The riding was sick. We actually got to ride a bit as well, which was, you know, we did Rare. some, we did, <laughs> we did some scouting on the first day. <laughs> yeah, scouting. That was um, an unreal trip. Connor yeah. called that place because Kona. Um, and I think his team had been there a bit and was just like, oh, got to go with Tally. Straight away, didn't even have to think about it. And then like a month later, Finn was like, hey, bro, I like, I'd be so keen if we could go to Italic. And we're like, ooh. <laughs> oh, oh. Poor Finn. <laughs> and he literally, to this day, he still hasn't, he still doesn't shut up about it. It was so good. But I can see why. It was amazing. Just like, just classic, like, BC lodge in the middle of nowhere um good food good people amazing riding and it's all you know fresh because you don't don't get a lot of traffic there um get uplifted in army ex-army trucks yeah Yeah. i was just sick and obviously the mark wallace one too which is bc too right yeah, we did a couple of trips to BC. Um, yeah. Mark did a. He yeah. yeah, got Britallic, which is obviously they've. It's a. It's not a bike park, but it's a resort which they've obviously built the trails up and official trails and stuff. But Mark went in into the woods near his house and with a load of his mates and basically spent a month building this trail for the you know specifically for the film, which was awesome. Yeah, that was it was really cool. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool, like again respect to Stevie Smith and stuff in there as well, which obviously is important to do that. <coughs> but, yeah, yeah, well, go on, Joe. No, no, you go for it. No, I was, I was just going to say, going back to what we said, um, and riders that we wanted in the film at the start, and Stevie was one of those riders that we kind of had, you know, listed down at the start that we were keen to have in, and he was stoked as well. We We approached him and asked him if he was... He'd be cool, and this was right at the beginning before he'd even approached anyone, and he was keen to be in the film. So we were like, "Fuck yeah, you know, Stevie Smith section." Um, and then obviously, um, we all know what happened, um, which was, yeah, real. Obviously, a big tragedy, and it. Um, but yeah, it was. We wanted to do something to kind of show respect to to Stevie. Um, and, I th- and, yeah, also, sure and also, and also, like. in his own respect, in his own right, Mark is obviously a sick rider. So it kind of all lined up, um, and we could kind of pay respect to to Stevie, but also have Mark in the film um, as well. 
um, and yeah. a, a rad, awesome rider in his own respect. So, yeah, no, it was uh, that was that was cool. I think yeah, it was good. It's cool. Man. And with that perfect segue from Mono, we're going to hand over now to Mark Wallace, who's going to tell us a little bit more about his section in the film. When John Mono asked me if I wanted a segment in Gamble, uh, it was pretty much a no-brainer to accept. Um, and at that time, I already had thoughts about building a new trail, so I asked that if I was to build this trail, if we could shoot that and use it for my segment. And they were into it and said I could do whatever I wanted. So we got started, and uh, it was cool to see it through the whole process, like find, finding the line, building it, riding it, shooting it, and then seeing the, the final product at the premiere. We actually had a lot of people come out to help dig, but mostly it was my friends Riley and Don and myself. Um, super thankful those guys were so dedicated. Um, it wouldn't have happened without them, so we're definitely pretty lucky. And all those wooden features that you see in the line was all uh, Riley's input and building. Um, and then Don was kind of the one who got us out there on the miserable days to, to actually make it happen in time. <laughs> So I guess we make a pretty good team. I don't know exactly how long we spent building it, uh, maybe like 100 hours. It was pretty full on for about three weeks in late September and early October. And then once I started injuring myself and the shoot was getting pushed, we would uh, just go up and kind of refine the trail a little bit. And that was good because we couldn't go riding together since I was hurt. So we still got to hang out. Um, that was fun, but I wasn't very useful trail builder at that time. So they were doing most of the work. <laughs> uh, we shot in late February and it was pretty much our last chance I think we were on like our backup plans backup plan at that point um, the weather could have ruined it um, but luckily it uh, it cooperated and wasn't too cold, it didn't snow much um, so we were able to make it happen but uh, it was definitely pretty nerve wracking coming into it um, just hoping it was going to work out in my mind like if we couldn't ride that line then I wasn't going to have a have a segment in Gamble. So um, really stressful, but it all worked out, and we're stoked. I've seen the film twice now, Whistler and Croatia. Um, it's cool. I enjoyed seeing everyone riding outside of a race. It's kind of different. Um, it's hard to pick a favorite. They all kind of offer something. Um, but I think Blinkies would be my favorite. If I had to pick one to watch, just because the rider and location combo uh, make for some pretty unbelievable shots. It's it's unreal. Why should you buy Gamble? Uh, well, because it's a bike movie, and it's really entertaining. I've seen it twice now, and I'm still going to buy it. <laughs> so before we wrap this, this bitch up, I love that term, wrap this bitch up. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> Uh, Mono first, um, what's the the hardest thing about making this film? What's been like the, the most gnarliest memory? Uh, if, In fact, there's a, there's a better term for that, biggest challenge. Biggest <laughs> challenge for me, uh, and the thing I can take away is probably, if you're going to do a film like this, it's probably maybe not a good idea at the same time to try and do a barn conversion. At exactly the same time is probably right. not not ideal. <laughs> okay. So that was probably right. the biggest challenge for me is trying to juggle these two pretty massive. So you're going projects. home with nowhere to live as well. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we were between. It was just a struggle to be honest with you. The last it was it was awesome, but <clears> if <throat> I just wish we'd have done the barn conversion a year earlier, and then done the film, you know, <laughs> just did these two things. Uh, yeah. Different at uh, different times would have been nice. Um, and is it ju is it just your home you convert in, or is it an investment property? Or? No, no. Is uh, we were looking for a place to live, and uh, this place came up on the market, uh, and we kind of both were keen on doing a project. So we, we ended up doing a probably the most difficult project we could have done, which was a barn conversion. <laughs> but we got there in the end, and, and, and it was worth. And added a film on top, <laughs> and then doing the film on top. Yeah. So, um, but it was good. It was like it's it's. It's worked out on both fronts, so yeah, it was. In hindsight, yeah. it's good, but it was a, it was difficult along the way, but uh, yeah. Yeah. What about you, Joey? What's uh, what's been the biggest challenge of this whole process? I think just like having enough time to do other stuff. Like obviously, you know, going away, doing the film, but keeping on top of like 
other work and you know home life and, and seeing Hannah and yeah. your mates and yeah just forgetting the balance of it all and just keeping on top of everything's tricky like with anything I think like any job um but yeah I think once you're on on the shoots like they all went pretty well like we had mm. going back to Mark briefly like bless him he broke himself twice we had on the third time lucky on the trip out there we had to cancel two trips we were <laughs> was it a day or maybe two days before we flew on the first one he broke it, yeah. his wrist um obviously he was really upset felt really bad for him which obviously you know puts him out of training doesn't it as well um and then about six weeks later we got flights booked and about I don't know, a week before he just crashed, put his hand out and basically blew all the ligaments in his thumb, I think, and had to have surgery on his thumb, put him out another six weeks. <laughs> so We were getting pretty tight then by that. <laughs> Is that why it's the last section? <laughs> it's like the last bit of work to do. <laughs> yeah, it was literally, March was the last, last shoot because we, we were get, if it had been, if he'd have had another injury that would have been it um so we yeah we just got it we just snuck it in there right at the end i think when did we film marks joe was it end of uh it was just before we went to tennessee wasn't it so it was end of february um yeah end of feb yeah so yeah it was but getting it was a bit very close to the to the limit it's felt bad for mark like he's out yeah. for nearly three months with injuries and yeah. then in between that him and Riley McIntosh, he's a local trail builder. He used to build stunts for like New Disorder and do you remember Life Cycles? All yeah, that yeah. stuff. He was had a seg obviously a section in there as well. And he's all the stuff they built was amazing. Like all those drops and mm. all that bench cut stuff and the slabs and linked it all together. It was ridiculous. The Don as well. Don, the Don. The rest of the crew. Um yeah, doing that as well as his training, as well as being injured. It was crazy. And then we got lucky again with the weather because it had more snow than they normally do on the island. When we turned up, it was still covered in snow, the track, and we were like, oh. We even bought bags of salt and we were ready. We were going to, like, grit the whole track. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily... Needs must, man. Needs must. Yeah. We ended up being lucky with the weather there as well, didn't we? Because we had the sick, like, snowy sort of scenics for the you know for the intro and stuff and then as soon as we started shooting the right well maybe a, i think we had a maybe a day which was a bit dodgy but after that we had like the snow melted really quickly and we had perfect conditions really for shooting but uh, a week before and you guys have had someone looking over you ah well mate yeah 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 we did we get very lucky so but it was cool definitely um for you aaron what's the like, what's your um, out-the-park sort of, like, you know, situation for this film now? Like, you know, it gets released on May the 15th. Yeah, um, yeah 15th of May. Yeah. What are you, you know, what, what's the best situation for you? What's going to, you know, what, what do you want to happen with it? Um, I just that, want people to... make sense? Like, yeah, I want people to, <clears throat> to watch it, really. I'd like to do... Yeah. I would like to do another one. I think doing this is... It was a struggle along the way, but now, I think now... I kind of realise now what it was all for. Like, obviously, I said earlier with the premieres and stuff and sitting there and watching it, and especially at the World Cup one, when you've got all the riders in the industry and the people that you, you know, you've worked on this with um, yeah. along the way, and they're all, you know, they're all enjoying it and loving it and cheering it. And it's like, I don't know, it's just really, it kind of, you don't really get that feeling doing doing smaller projects although smaller projects right, are fun yeah. they're like you don't get yeah. that real big sense of satisfaction that you do when you sit down in a cinema with two or three hundred people watching it and i think yeah that was cool for me that was that was probably the best bit so far but if people mm. you know if people buy it and watch it and you know maybe we can maybe we'll do another one in the future so nice tantalizing teaser well, right, you, Jerry, what's your uh, out-the-park perfect situation for this film? I mean, just to butt in, I mean, 
obviously death grip going on netflix is that something on the radar or is that not all that important to you uh not really thought about it i kind of uh, i'll be honest i don't really know how it works <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but i don't think those guys did <laughs> it's amazing that death grip's on there like netflix is obviously a massive thing yeah. and to have mountain biking on there is really cool and you never know if they've set a precedent and that's successful then maybe yeah. if but I'm not kind of, you know, holding out any hope for it. It'd be amazing, but just really want people to watch it. Like, you know, you do it all, and it's not. It's definitely not a money-making scheme. We're not going to, you know, make a ton of cash and retire and buy Teslas. But, um, yeah, just want people to watch all the rad riding that's in there. Mainly because, you know, all those riders and everyone who's been involved put in so much effort. Like, it'd be such a shame for no one to watch it. Um, so, and hopefully yeah. if people if people what do enjoy it and, you know, like Death Grip was successful, if this one's successful as well, maybe. I know there's a few other people out there, a few other squids who are thinking about doing, doing some movies as well, you know, like maybe it'll, you know, spur and inspire. Inspire them too. Those guys I think the cool, cool thing as well, like, from the outside looking in is that when you've got a film like this been released whether it's death grip or you know your i mean correct me if i'm wrong but you you know your two films are pretty much the only feature length films in the last sort of few years for downhill right? i guess for, for downhill, downhill yeah, yeah yeah and it's rad to see that like the whole industry and everyone who sort of rides bikes sort of like gets behind it you know and again maybe it's because i'm super connected especially in sheffield with joe but it's awesome to see, you know, how much positivity is around, how many shares you guys get on, like, social media. Like, just the stoke level is so high for a feature-length film in mountain biking. Yeah, it's mm. really cool. It's cool, man. We've got, like, a super supportive industry, I think. I'd like to think so. Yeah, and like Aaron just said, hopefully that means... I think things are not going, like, full circle, but, you know, like, with Netflix... Yeah people binge watch Netflix like hours and hours of TV shows and movies and the attention spans obviously there for like long form stuff still it's just changed how you view it like all right you're not buying a DVD anymore but instead you're subscribing to Netflix each month and you're probably watching way more films than you ever Mm. were it's just the way you're consuming it and then on the other hand you've got like sub 30 second Instagram videos that you watch and then just swipe and they're gone forever it's that just in that weird time, aren't we, where we're like... But I think, yeah, hopefully um, there'll be support for doing bigger things like this in the future. And I'd definitely like to do another one, another, I guess, more creative, bigger projects that take more time because they are fun and you can put everything into it and take your time on it a bit more as well. It's cool. Well, hopefully, people are going to love the film. By the sounds of it, so far, people are f- fucking love it. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited for it to be released on May the fifteenth. Where can people get it? There's oh, just obviously co-op. Co-op. It's in Aldi. It's yeah. in the middle aisle. <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> <in the bin. laughs> yeah. If people want, if people want us to do a DVD run, I've definitely heard a few people ask for it. So maybe we will really? do a DVD run and we'll put it and we will sell it to Aldi. That could what be... about VHS? Is that is that something you've considered? <laughs> yeah, if people Did donate. <laughs> I had this idea, like elaborate idea for a competition where you'd get like five copies on VHS, and five <laughs> VHS players, and we'll have like a package competition <laughs> thing. Amazing. Just never got around to it. That'd be sick. Yeah. <laughs> like just spray paint and gold. <laughs> so where is it going to be available, dudes? Where can people find this film? All the usual places, I guess. The places that um, you'd expect to find, like at iTunes, Vimeo, On Demand, which you can pre-order already. Uh, I think okay. the iTunes pre-order is coming up pretty soon, but it's not out yet. Uh, but keep an eye out for, out for that. Uh, and then mm-hmm. Google Play... Uh, bah, 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 bah. where else uh, is it YouTube Red I think something like that oh right is that, is that right kind of everywhere, everywhere. Downloads but the, the main one's going to be iTunes right I guess that's I guess the main so, yeah. one yeah whatever yeah. Your, your chosen site is really so we'll put we'll put a link to uh, pre-order in the description below so it'd be the 
the first thing you see under the show description. So click that. Sweet. Make sure you go by the film in advance. You'll be the first one to see it. And uh, before we wrap up, like, do you guys have any like thank yous you want to do or social shout outs or anything like that? Like, where can people track the film, etc.? Um, first will be Mono. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I did want to say, and before I knocked over my beer earlier, was I was about. Oh, to sorry. Go. No, no, no. But it, yeah, it's my. <coughs> well, why are you saying sorry? You didn't knock it over. Um, wow. <laughs> You don't know. I was actually, <laughs> at the time, the reason why I knocked over, I was swapping from video camera to uh, Zoom recorder to um, okay. record my voice. But anyway, um, yeah, I was going to start talking about Loic Section and Freeride Madeira. Um, so mm-hmm. I just want to throw that in there. That's one of the awesome okay. things for this year has been the, the help from all the sponsors, um, including Freeride Madeira, but Santa Cruz, Maxis, Fox, Envy, and sound like a motocross rider here. Uh, Marsh <laughs> um, yeah, God. all those guys have been sick. So, um, yeah, cheers to all those guys for sure, and everyone else who's helped with the film. Awesome, and, and people can follow you on it's at Creative Concept dot TV. Yeah, on the Instagram, etc. Follow me. Yes, I've only got, I haven't got very many followers. So, <laughs> follow as Ollie me. Wilkins would say, add me, tag me, add me, tag and, me. Uh, and Joe, Joe. Hey, have, you, have you seen him on the billboard outside J. James? Yeah, I have. I read that. Beautiful. <laughs> Focus e bikes. Ollie Wilkins. Is this Tongue out? Uh, I need to go for a closer inspection. Well, it's got to be. Isn't it? it will be. It's cool, though. Be out. Big poster. Yeah, it's good for his personal I get to see him every I day now. I haven't seen him in ages. <laughs> Very dumb. Legend. Legend. Fan favorite. He was second, I think. We did a, a poll for last year, I think. Yeah. Fan favourite. It was Martin Ashton just pipped him to the post over Ollie Wilkins. But I enjoyed yeah, Ollie's. That was dudes. good. I did listen yeah, to him. Ollie's, yeah, Ollie's hilarious. Hopefully we're going to get him on here more pretty soon, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> 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 uh, dear. Uh, but yeah, Joe, um, thank yous or anything like that you want to you wanna shout out feel free uh yeah like aaron said just everyone who helped with the film riders friends family and sponsors um yeah it's been it's been mad but we got there which is cool um and yeah if you want to for more info i guess if you go on gamblefilm.com sam mcqueen's knocked up a cool well that proposal website that we talked about with the password is now the actual oh, website oh, is it? yeah we just basically took the password off so you can go and see like the cool stuff he's done on there um and there's the you know the trailer and all the other bit pre-order yeah, bits yeah. and what have you on there all right we'll throw a link to that as well in the show description so you can uh, check that out and obviously all over instagram and all that sort of stuff people can yeah find it there um lovely all right dudes it's been a pleasure absolute pleasure thank you cheers david very thon episode 50 holy shit is to 50 more. Will we get to 100? Can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be episode 100? Is that going to be for Gamble too? Oh, geez. It's two years away. Nah, it's not enough time. Nah, it's not. <laughs> 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 All right, dudes. Really appreciate you both, both of you taking time out to do this. Uh, I hope the film's successful. Um, yeah, super stoked to see it hit the market and stuff. So for everyone listening, buy it tag these guys like make sure you tell them that you listen to the podcast and that sort of stuff it goes a long way and uh, and thank you for listening over and out cheers peace peace hell yeah episode 50 in the bag hopefully you guys enjoyed listening to that I know it's a bit of a different episode lots of different sound qualities and all that sort of stuff but it's the only way we could make that happen Also, hopefully, you've already pre-ordered the film by the time you get to this uh, end of this podcast. If not, don't forget, it comes out Tuesday the 15th of May. Um, Also, thank you guys so much for the support over the last sort of few years. To get into episode 50 is a bit of a milestone. If you have enjoyed listening to any of the episodes, please go to iTunes, leave a review, share it with your friends, like whatever you can do really, really, really helps. T-shirts will be released in a week or so. Don't forget, if you're heading to Fort Bill, come and say hello. Same at Kendall, uh, sorry, Keswick Mountain Festival. Come over and say hello. And then also Malvern's. But there'll be a bunch of episodes in between those events. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks again, folks. Have a great week. Enjoy the film. Don't forget. 
tell these guys you listened and watched it and all that sort of stuff. It goes a long way. Okay. Peace out.